Hello, this is Mike at Game From Scratch, and welcome to a Blender quick tutorial. Uh, we've covered a lot of Blender, either on GameFromScratch.com uh, or Game From Scratch, the YouTube channel. Uh, but what we really haven't covered is retopology, which is a kicker because it's incredibly important for game development. Um, if you've never heard of it, retopology, um, well, you can think of the two words, re uh, and topology. Topology is the key one. Topology describes the shape of your surface. Um, it's the outer hull or the, the polygon mesh that you've created. So really, when you think of a mesh, it's a topology. It's a de definition of shape in 3D. Now, re is exactly what it sounds like again. So what you're doing when you're doing a retopology is resurfacing or in more accurate terms, what you're doing is you're basically creating a simpler version on top of a high resolution or high detail model. And this is very common in game development because a lot of times you will work with a very high resolution version, uh, whether you sculpted it in say Blender, um, Maya has built-in sculpting tools, Sculptress, ZBrush, Mudbox, whatever. There's a lot of sculpting tools out there that generate very dense, very high resolution meshes and not always nice edge loops, clean topology meshes. So a lot of times you've got a nice outline or nice shape, but the polygons you use to get there, there are either way too many of them or the edge flow sucks. So what you want to do is you create these really high resolution versions and you can use those for generating your normal maps, etc or your static renders if that's what you need to do. But for a real-time game, what you need to do is generate a lower resolution version of that model. And that's where retopology kicks in. Now in Blender, there's retopology tools that are very simple, uh, which is sort of a double-edged sword. Some other modeling tools have probably better retopology tools, but the basic, the simpleness of it, well, for one, it'll make this tutorial a lot simpler. So that's exactly what we're going to look at. Now, first off, before I jump in, I'm going to assume you already know how to use Blender. I'm not going to tell you, you know, how I'm going to move things around or switching between edit modes, etc. If you see me doing stuff and you're like, how the hell do you do that? Watch one of those two tutorials I talked about. I'll link both of them. There's a text and a video version. They will cover all of the mechanics that I'm going through. This is all about retopology and that's it. Uh, so let's jump right in. So first thing we need to do is have a high resolution model to work with. And I'm just going to take the default Blender Cube and we're going to just uh, switch into edit mode. Oh, switch into edit mode. Uh, subdivide the heck out of this sucker so we have lots of polygons. All right, what are we at? All right, so we are now at uh, seven, uh, actually that's, that's a little too many, uh, 200,000 triangles, so that'll work for me. So we've got a very dense mesh going on here. Now what we're gonna do is we quickly sculpt it so our shape has a little bit more interest to it. And then we're gonna make a lower resolution version of it, or at least a portion of it. Because once you've seen part of the process, you can extrapolate how the rest works. So uh, let's just do that right now. First I'm gonna switch this over to smooth shading so it looks a little bit better. And now let's switch over to sculpt mode. So here's our shape. I'm gonna quickly add some detail. Picture this as, I don't know, an alien head or something. You know, let's put this chin out like so, and let's do a little bit of pushing. All right, works for me. So there is our basic shape that we're going to work with. Obviously, it could be whatever you want. The kicker that you need to know here is there's a lot of detail going on with the surface, and we're talking 200,000 polygons here for a head. Now, if you're dealing with a real-time game, you do not want to push 200,000 polygons out for the head. At least not, perhaps if you do a close-up cutscene, you might want the high-res version, but for real-time, you're going to want to get this down, number down a whole lot. So now let's bring this guy back over to object mode, and let's rename him. So in Stick Cube, we'll call him High Res Model. And now what we need to do is implement a low res model that we're gonna draw over top of it. Now it doesn't matter what you create. So um, let's do a shift A and we're just gonna create a plane. So Z, there's our plane right inside. Now I said it doesn't matter what you create it's because we're gonna delete it all anyway. So let's grab our plane here and we'll call this low res model like so. All right, so switch over to edit mode, select everything like so and hit X and delete all the vertices. So now what we have is a polygon model with no polygons, which is perfect. That's where we want to go from. So now that we've got our shape, here is the key part of this entire tutorial. Basically, this is the tutorial. So pay attention to the next 30 seconds. The key to this whole thing 
is snapping. So first thing we do is turn snapping on. Snapping, if you've worked in any modeling software ever, uh, be it 2D or 3D, snapping is simply a guide that will automatically snap one thing to another thing. So uh, you snap to grid, snap to vertex, snap to edge, snap to um, various things. Uh, what we want to do here is snap to faces. Like so. Now, where this magic kicks in, though, is what you normally use snapping for, snapping to your own model. But that's not what we want to do this time. We want to turn that off. So that's the default setting right here. We don't want to snap onto ourselves. Turn that off. Instead, we want to use its neighbor right here. And this is project elements onto the surface of other objects. Perfect. Turn that on. And really, end of lesson. See you tomorrow. Okay, so I'll actually show you the process. But really, that is pretty much how you use retopology in Blender. So now let's hit Control and left click, and we just created a vertex, thanks to snapping, on the surface of our mesh. Now the amount of detail you add right away is up to you. Generally, probably work low, um, as little detail as possible, and then go up from there. Um, now we can either do a string of vertices, connect them together, and then um, create a grid and turn that into faces, or we can um, turn this into an edge and uh, go from there. And that's the approach I'm going to take here. So we got our single vertex now. Hit E for extrude, and then drag the line down to wherever you want it to go. And then let's do E to extrude, and then again, E to extrude, and again, E to extrude, and again. Now again, the amount of surface detail you use is totally up to you, but the key thing that you want to do here is have a nice clean edge flow. So you want to look at your model and figure out you know, where it naturally loops, the contours that it's going to follow, how you're going to animate it, keep all those things into effect. Now, the art of creating a nice edge loop takes a lifetime to learn. I can't teach you that here. You can find all kinds of guides on the internet about doing it. It is definitely the artistic part of this. This is all technical stuff. The artistic stuff is making clean edge lines, coincidentally. So uh, we just extruded our vertex out. So we now have this ring of edges right here. So let me just switch over to edge mode and do select all. So there you go. And now we're just going to take that and extrude it out. And now we have a set of faces. And perfect. We're exactly where we want to be. Now what you might notice is um, this is very hard to understand where our polygons are. So let's do something about that. Uh, first off, let's go into uh, solids mode. So we've got a catch here now. The one nice thing is we can now kind of see. But the difference is we've got a very low resolution model here that is you know, not necessarily the amount of detail as the underlying surface model. Um, so that's why it's going under and over at some points, which is making it very hard to see. There's a simple fix to this. And we just go over into with the low res model selected, just kick on over to here uh, into the uh, objects tab and just turn X-ray on. So now no matter where it is in the hierarchy or hierarchy, um, it will automatically be drawn. So even if it goes under or over the underlying surface, we're good to go. And now, um, really, it's a matter of just sort of adding the detail as we want it. Now, we saw that we kind of went under uh, at this one point right here. So we don't have enough detail right there, obviously. We want to follow that surface. So let's get a point in there. So let's just do a quick cut. We're just using edge loop cut R. And our will automatically follow the underlying surface and we're good to go. And now the rest of it is just sort of a matter of defining your basic shape. We could take this particular edge here. Just keep extruding it, and each time it's going to follow the underlying surface. And you see we're automatically going up to follow the surface. And done. Or we can grab a bunch of edges and do the same thing. Now, this is going to create an interesting issue, though. So as you can see, we're creating it very, very, very quickly, thanks to the snapping down here. We're creating a contour that matches our underlying shape. And I could have turned the mirror modifier on and had this side being done at the same time. So you can see how you can very quickly um, create the a lower resolution version as you go. So we could just keep kind of, you know, we could, actually, it's going to be a little messy now that I've done this shape, but we could you know, bring a couple more down. Or I could grab an entire edge loop, but that's problematic, as you will see in a second. So we could just keep it. And then you can use your normal. So grab both these guys. We can make a face, grab this guy, make a face, and this guy, this guy, make a face. But you're creating a low res version of a high res polygon very fast, actually. Now, it's when you start getting these corners together that it starts getting messy. Now, and again, you can start adding more and more detail, just quickly throwing edge loops in. 
so so if we needed a little bit more detail in there we can easily add it but don't add detail until you need it but really this is the process the only thing that you haven't seen here is this and what we had is our model right there see when we did that edge down it didn't follow the surface exactly and that's because the underlying surface and the edges we were trying to extrude there was nothing there to snap to but there's this is quickly and easily fixed we're just going to grab our guy and go over to modifiers and there's a quick modifier built in here called shrink wrap and you can turn a shrink wrap on and then all you need to do is pick what to shrink wrap to and now when we go back to object mode our surface will automatically snap down. So we are now right on. So back to edit, you see it pulled out, back down. Or you can stay in edit mode, click this guy right here, and it will automatically shrink wrap to the underlying surface. And that would be mostly used for, again, floating edges that got away from the surface. Um, or a lot of times when you're dealing with something like um, a, a spherical shape or a cylindrical shape, it's harder to do it this way because this is going to require the way we're working right now we basically have to be facing the camera with our selection uh, to make it work cleanly so if you're dealing with 360 degrees worth of selection it doesn't work that smoothly as you will quickly discover so shrink wrap is a great way to have it go and shrink down to the underlying thing and then when you've got it to where you want it to go just apply it why did you monitors my oh yeah sorry edit mode apply and it's shrunk wrap. So you can just keep shrink wrapping as you go. But really that is it. We take this guy over here. Now let's turn snapping off so it doesn't go all freaky. And what you see is essentially a low res version of that underlying shape. And that is the process of retopology. Now there are some plugins and tools out there that can make it so that you can draw quick curves and it'll figure out the rest for you. Uh, some of those have price tags attached. Some of them may look at the future if there's some interest, but the built-in tools for retopology are what you just saw. Basically uh, face snapping as you saw down here and shrink wrap to suck the surface in when it's being pulled away. And those two combined, you can very quickly create a low resolution version of a high resolution polygon. And the nice thing is then you can apply the normal map you generated from the high resolution or the texture maps you generated for the high resolution and transfer them to the low version and using a lot less polygons. So right now, you know, we only modeled say a fifth of this, but instead of 200,000 faces, we have uh, I don't know how to get just the one. Let me see if I turn that guy off. Do I see? All right. Okay, I forget exactly where to get the polygon count, but we probably have maybe 100. Um, so, and of course, you're going to want to add more detail. You're going to probably want to have uh, UV smoothing on this guy so it doesn't look awful, uh, etc. But for the most part, you create a really low resolution version that has the same basic contour as the higher detail version and then you can hide the lack of detail using textures very simply. So that's retopology and for the record pretty much every single AAA studio out there and probably every A studio and most indie studios do this. So if this is not a weapon that is in your arsenal as an artist, add it because retopology allows you to use you could quickly throw together a very high detail version and then after the fact make a nice game ready version to work with. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed that. See you later on. Bye.